Dylan, my buddy, is going to help me with this. we got to transform the shop from uh, some of the projects that we've done in here most recently and clear the space out so that we can, in fact, start standing up the strong back and get this thing going. The strong back is a name that I've heard used by boat builders who know what they're doing as the reference point uh, on which to arrange the formers or ribs or frames. In the traditional boat building, they call them frames. So uh, this is the start of how I'm doing a strong back. I've done this a couple of different ways. In my first boat years ago, I just had a one car garage and so I nailed two by fours across the studs at the right spots and fastened the ribs to those and used that as a reference point. What I'm gonna do with this one is something I did uh, with a similar boat is make it rollable. <clears throat> I've used these for a number of projects and then just keep them in the attic. Uh, we need to spread out the plywood and mark that out or something. You can roll the whole assembly outside and in, in somewhere else and then bring it back in when you need it, move it around the shop. So we'll have it on wheels. Uh, now this boat is designed to be 14 feet long. So we've marked that out in scale. These are two by sixes that are just a little bit more than 14 feet. And before um, we start uh, putting the uh, boards between them, and I'm gonna use uh, what I used to do when I was framing houses going through school, which is to do the layout marks on the two sides of it, just like you do on wall, uh, when you're framing walls, and do that first. So I'll show you how I did that. Uh, there's some marks already on there from the last boat I built, uh, which was similar to this one. 14.6. So I'm going to put a nail in here to measure back off of. From the bow back, we should have uh, the first rib at two and a half feet. From the bow, two feet six. Now, you can see I'm, I'm going to make these ribs out of half inch material. Uh, I want the widest piece of it to be on the mark and then set forward as we would say because what's going to happen is I've calculated the curves to this point to be at a certain width and uh, the angle on the sides and on the bottom will be or they call a <clears throat> what do they call that there's a fancy name for it so this is R1, R2, former 3 and R4 seven foot ten and a half to what we're now calling f3 right so now you can see that the seven foot ten and a half mark is on the forward side because we're assuming the curve is going to start sloping back toward the stern so this is in the right spot we're laying out set ahead now and i'm calling this on the new boat f3 and talk through the changes from the last version of this sometime. I moved this rib back just a little further, I think, compared to the old boat because when you're thinking about sitting in this boat, <clears throat> so it's really this compartment where you're gonna want to have the most time spent. Uh, either putting your legs forward from here or back. And I'm gonna add some side benches as long, along with the thwarts, the crossways benches add some side benches which the previous boat didn't have so to maximize this the area here i moved this back to 10 foot six so so 10 foot six and this material is a half inch thick so we'll draw the half inch line and this is called r4 and finally we have what's labeled here t for transom and if I measure back, that should be at exactly 14 feet from the bow.
This is my wife Debbie. And that's Eldon. You want to see? Yay! Hammer? Use that. Now, did you have something like this for the other one? Yep, I'm actually reusing most of the pieces. Alright, we're ready to turn the strong back over, right side up, and with a little luck, it's going to remain right side up until we've got the boat nearly done, upside down, and ready to take off the strong back and flip them over. And... What do you think, huh? So look, we've got we've got a two by four across here, right where R1 is going to go. I'm going to fasten the uh, first rib to the face of that vertical. Oh. Here, we'll be able to put uh, vertical right against where the other formers and ribs have to go, sitting on top of the plywood bits. What we want to do now is establish our reference line fore and aft on the bottom and top of the structure. lines above and below corresponding to that top line there corresponds to this line on the drawings um, you may notice these are a little taller than uh, when I wrapped up I realized that I'd used some pieces that uh, had been repurposed during the last build and cut down a bit so I double checked the height the height between here and the top of the strong back is a little bit arbitrary. Yesterday, when I finished uh, putting putting these posts up and the, and the uh, lines across them, I didn't have sufficient clearance, so I just took them down and uh, put up a new set and re, re plumbed the two reference lines. All what I want to do next is uh, make the patterns, uh, some paper patterns for the shapes of the ribs, so that I can properly plan the use of the uh, plywood and I thought I'd explain a little bit about why to use plywood for the ribs. Uh, the first boat I built, a uh, 17 foot day sailor, it's now 30 years old or so, actually built a similar structure uh, with plywood uh, sides and bottom, hard chine as they say, a sharp um, angle across the chine so that you can do that. and. Um, ribs spaced approximately three feet apart. There's enough strength in that structure with plywood that you don't need ribs every six inches or every foot like in some traditional uh, boat building approaches. The ribs for that first boat out of one by four uh, stock and that's that's fine. I could do the same for this boat as well. I'm planning on them being about two and a quarter inches wide. That seems like a good balance of uh, giving sufficient strength uh, really the ribs are primarily for holding the shape as the boat is built, but they become uh, helpful to hang structures to, as we'll see. Uh, and, you know, they've, they've got some strength uh, addition as well. So two and a quarter inches wide, you can make that out of, out of boards of some kind. Um, <clears throat> but you then have to arrange for the joints where it goes uh, down the side and then at the chine joins and goes down to the bottom. And the nice thing about plywood, of course, is I can just lay the pattern out and cut it out. It's a little more wasteful of the wood, but uh, so that's the trade-off. I decided to do plywood ribs, and, and, and these are permanent in the boat, is I'm buying nice plywood. This is birch, half-inch plywood I'm going to make the ribs out of. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is make a paper pattern laying out at least the half shape of all of the ribs so that I can properly plan the use of this piece of plywood. All right, we're going to start with R1. And here we've got, as you can see, hopefully the measurements, both in the horizontal dimension on the top view and in the vertical dimension on the side view that together should allow us to plot out uh, full size half of the shape of this rib. All right, so here's our baseline, here's the center line. So R1. But I continue to uncover things, so I made, made um, one adjustment down. This is uh, R4 at the shear at the top edge of the boat and out at the transom and in at the chine on R4 and then re-reflected all of these measurements. So sure enough, that's at that line instead. <clears throat> and why did I do that? It's because when looking from the stern here, I'm taking a bat and I'm trying to say, do we get a good curve along this chine, the angle between the side and the bottom, taking a bat and then looking along there and we want to see uh, a decent curve. And the other thing that I was looking at is the difference in these angles as you go across. It would be bad if it went from this way to this way and then back to this way. That's going to indicate that something's off in these lines. So. Uh, what I'm going to do finally before I start to seriously cutting out ribs is re-draw um, these lines across the adjustments and make sure it's still looking okay from the top and the and the side. I think. at least at a scale level these lines based on the tweaks that we did by lofting in real size the four and a half views of those ribs and I think I think it looks good uh, the full-scale lofting from this vantage point will have to take place on the strong back there'll be some opportunity to to adjust uh, the curves as we go along so we'll see how that goes